Any research-based writing project begins as a swarm of information and ideas. The brain is structured like an elaborate web, with every point connected to dozens and even thousands of other points, all radiating outward and interconnected in dazzlingly complex ways. For this reason, ideas tend to appear to consciousness as clusters of associations, more or less densely packed, but generally sprawling, amorphous, and open-ended. Written language, however, has a very different geometry. Writing is always one thing at a time, and one thing after another, in a linear progression from the first word to the last. One of the major challenges for most writers is the translating of the cloudy impressionism of thinking into rows of individual words and sentences. Doing so can be thought of as a pair of processes commonly called analysis, breaking apart, and synthesis, bringing together. The first step for a writer trying to turn a thought cloud into a word line is to precipitate out the most salient elements of the cloud, breaking the cloud down into individual units, analysis, and then finding a way to order the individual elements so that they can be made to fit together into an intelligible linear sequence, synthesis. Outlining is a general term for any process writers use to itemize the specific things they want to say, and then for arranging these elements into a sequence that allows them to tell a story. When most students think of outlining, they likely think of Roman numerals, capital and lowercase letters, sections and subsections, and the whole apparatus can seem very cumbersome and pointless. Rather than thinking about an outline as an extra task that you have to do in addition to writing your paper, however, the most effective kind of outline is one that is an evolutionary step on the way to your paper. The word outline is a metaphor drawn from the visual arts. A painter outlines a figure before adding details and coloring it in, and in some ways, this is a useful metaphor. Sketching out in bold strokes where the legs and arms and heads of a figure will be is a necessary first step to filling in the toes, fingers, and eyes. The same is true of your paper. Your selection of your topic is analogous to an artist's decision to paint a particular figure. The next step for both the artist and the writer is the decision of how to pose the subject. Where will the head of your essay be? What will it be doing with its arms? How will your essay use its legs to get it where it wants to go? In short, what will it look like? Research is all about finding little bits of data, quotations, statistics, perspectives, etc. Writing up an outline for your paper presents you with an opportunity to integrate all of these little pieces into a complete whole. The process is a little like doing a jigsaw puzzle. You have to find which pieces of information belong to a certain part of the puzzle and then try to fit them together. But the analogy is imperfect because in a real jigsaw puzzle, there is a pre-existing solution. For your research essays, you will have to invent the solution that is right for you. The first step to outlining is identifying a big picture pattern that you can use as a kind of template for discussing your topic. Fortunately, there are common formulas that writers typically use to convey complex clouds of information. These prefabricated formulas save writers the time and mental expense of inventing a new structural formula every time they sit down to write something, and they also help readers feel comfortable that they can orient themselves within the general shape of a new piece of writing by recognizing the genre in which the piece is written. As I discuss the following five structural formulas, think about how you might apply what you know about your trend to each of these formulas. Any topic can be discussed using any of these formulas. The important thing for a writer is to find a formula that clicks with your own sense of what you think about your trend and what you want to say about it. I have illustrated each of the following five structural formulas with examples of a proposed essay on organic food. One, argument and support. This is one of the most common kinds of structural organization. If you have a strong opinion that the trend you are studying is either good or bad, the argumentative style of essay can provide you with a framework for explaining your reasons for believing what you believe, and the mission of convincing other people that you are right can be a powerful motivation to write. The structure of this essay is easy to follow and relatively easy to organize. After presenting your opinion in the first paragraph, the body of your essay is divided into paragraphs that articulate three or four specific arguments in support of your thesis. For an essay on organic food, the thesis for an argumentative essay would be something like, organic food is good and everyone should eat it. Um, the introduction would articulate that thesis statement. Then the first argument would say maybe something like it's good for your health. The second argument would say something like it's good for the environment. And the third argument would say something like it's good for society in general. 
if I can write, write a page long introduction and then come up with two pages worth of things to say about each of the sub arguments, this structure easily provides me with the outline for a seven page paper. Number two, problem and solution. Trends typically present themselves as solutions to a particular problem. Maybe your trend has been proposed as a solution to a problem, or maybe your trend is a problem in need of a solution. Either way, the problem solution formula can help you to describe what is going on. This formula has a lot in common with the argument essay, but structurally, the body of this essay is divided in half rather than into thirds. The first half of the essay, say three pages, describes the problem, while the second half of the essay's body describes the solution. So here's an example. Uh, the thesis of this essay is that we are facing a number of epidemic health problems and organic food is the answer. So a robust outlining process will allow me to divide this outline even further Maybe I want to identify three sub-problems and three key sub-solutions. Um, so I have a section about diabetes, and uh, this is divided up into a problem and solution. I have a section about obes obesity that's also divided into, into a paragraph about uh, the problem and a paragraph about the solution. And the same pattern with heart problems, a problem paragraph and a solution paragraph. I might think of the body of such an essay as three mini essays, one page about the problem of diabetes and a second page about how an organic diet can lower the risk of diabetes, one page about the risks of obesity and another page about how organic food can reduce obesity, one page about the risk of heart problems and another page about the benefits of an organic diet from a cardiological point of view. If these three mini arguments are framed with introductory and concluding paragraphs that reinforce the problem solution dynamic, this would likely be a structurally compact essay. Number three, cause and effect. Both the argumentative model and the problem solution model assume that the writer has some strong prescriptive sense of how the reader should think about the topic under discussion. Sometimes writers feel that they do have the answers and that their writing can help to move the needle of public opinion in a certain direction on an issue that is important to them. At other times, however, researchers are simply reporters trying to get a clear view of an ongoing phenomenon. In such a case, a writer may be less inclined to take an argumentative position or to propose specific policies. Sometimes it is more appropriate simply to observe and report. A cause and effect style essay is similar to a problem solution essay, but whereas the problem solution essay is more agenda driven, the cause effect essay is more like a clinical analysis of a particular subject. While the problem solution essay about organic food advocated for organic food as a solution to various problems, the cause effect essay would simply report on the specific effects of adopting an organic diet, or more pessimistically, of failing to depart from a diet of processed foods, from a more neutral and objective point of view. Structurally, the body of a cause effect essay has a similar three part structure. The cause is described toward the beginning of the essay, and then the body is divided into, divided into three or four effects that stem from the cause. So here's an example uh, of a cause effect thesis. When people eat organic food, they exert an immediate impact on their health, their communities, and the environment. So there's my three-part thesis statement. Um, the cause, obviously, is organic food, and so I'm going to spend a page describing and defining what organic food is. Then I'll spend a couple of pages talking about health, a couple of pages talking about the effect on community, and a couple of pages talking about the effect on the environment. Uh, add it all up, I've got a seven-page paper on the causes and effects of eating organic food. Number four, overview and details. In other cases, rather than connecting causes and effects in time, a writer is more interested in digging down into the facts and details of a particular topic or trend. Research-based writing presents a powerful opportunity for writers to move from general statements and familiar facts into more esoteric kinds of information, to move from a generally acknowledged statement into more obscure observations, moving down a continuum from what everybody knows to what only a select handful of professional researchers know. An overview and detail formula for an essay begins with something that is common knowledge, organic food is healthy, and then uses the body paragraphs to look more closely at the particular sub-facts that undergird the general statement. For any given topic, there are infinite ways that these details might be identified and arranged, but in the organic food example, I might try to narrow my focus by talking about specific kinds of organic foods that illustrate this principle. So here's another example. Um, in this case, the thesis is simply uh, that um, or organic food is an important trend, 
And we, again, we want to define and describe how this trend uh, has emerged. And But now I want to go into more details about specific kinds of organic food. So I have a couple of pages about organic meat, a couple of pages about organic fruits and vegetables, and a couple of pages about organic dairy products. Identifying these three specific subtopics that fall within the general umbrella of my overview topic allows me to guide readers predictably from general information that they might be familiar with to more rarefied kinds of information that they are encountering for the first time. And then five, story. Human beings are storytelling animals, and narrative has always been one of the most popular forms in which information and experience has been passed down through the generations. A narrative style of organization is inherent in the definition of a trend. Any trend can be discussed in terms of the narrative signposts of its beginning, how the trend originated, its middle, how the trend became popularized, to the end, where are we now, the current state of the art, or even the future. Many other kinds of information, however, also lend themselves to a storytelling approach, and so the chronological style of organizing technical information should always be on the radar of any writer. One of the convenient things about stories from a structural point of view is that they are neatly divided up into three parts, beginning, middle, and end, or if you prefer, past, present, and future. If you can divide the timeline of your trend into these three stages and write two pages about each stage, then you have a rough outline for your seven page essay. So in this case, the thesis is that organic food has been a growing trend for more than 50 years. And I, begin, I start off with the beginning where health activists first began promoting organic eating in the 1960s. I, the middle of my essay talks about the middle of the development of the trend. It became a fad through the 80s and 90s. And then the last couple of pages talk about where we are now. Now organic eating has come into the mainstream. Storytelling allows writers to piggyback on the naturally story-oriented minds of readers, and it has the added bonus of bringing us right up to the present moment, providing an opportunity for a writer to summarize the big picture and to speculate about the future in the essay's conclusion. These strategies are not mutually exclusive. As you play around with these different organizational formulas, you might decide to mix and match, combining the templates into more sophisticated structures. The best way to figure out how to do this, however, is to get the elements down on paper and then start putting them together in different ways. The best place to start is with what you already know about the topic and with what you already want to say. Once you start outlining your ideas, however, you will notice that certain organizational formulas take your topic in different directions, suggesting new research questions and demanding new pieces of information. Feel free to leave out information that doesn't fit into your outline, or to go searching for more information if your outline suggests that you need more data about a particular part of your paper. Overall, you should feel empowered to subordinate your sources to the purposes of your own paper. When you cite a source, that source is working for you. It is up to you whether you want to focus on certain sources and avoid talking about others, or to cherry pick certain facts from an article without addressing the article's main points, or to pick out certain words or phrases from a source and recontextualize them, or to do whatever else you want to do to make your sources serve your purposes. Identifying an organizational template that works for you is a helpful technique for setting out the broad strokes that will determine the general shape of your essay. As you can see in the examples above, the structure can suggest what your essay will look like at the page level, what will I be talking about on page one, page two, page three, etc. Once you begin to define these broad features, you can begin to talk about your essay on a more granular level. In particular, one page of academic text typically contains two or three paragraphs, so the next important task is to figure out what these individual paragraphs will be about. This question can be addressed by using the same strategies of analysis and synthesis that helped you to draw up the rough outline. As I sketch out the figure of my essay, the individual paragraphs begin to come into focus. To return to the analogy of an artist's sketch, any piece of writing can always be described in terms of a head, a body, and legs. The head of your essay is the introduction, which presents the public face of what you want to say. The body of your essay is the content, the information that is the blood and guts of the essay. The legs of your essay are the concluding paragraph, which are responsible for taking your essay somewhere and for making it do something. For my essay about organic food, I am using a problem-solution structure. This structure fits my intuitive sense that processed food is bad, a problem, and that organic food is good, a solution. I want to begin with a scary story about processed food, that's the head of my essay. 
I want to inform my reader about the risks of processed foods and the benefits of organic food. That's the body of my essay. And I want to convince my readers to incorporate more organic food into their diet. That'll be the legs of my essay, what I hope my essay will do. As we proceed to add fingers, toes, and eyes to this figure, our outline will gradually grow into a more and more detailed catalog of the things I'm going to talk about in my essay in the order in which I plan to talk about them. So the head is my scary story that I said I wanted to talk about. I have a personal connection, I have a couple of news stories, and then I'm leading up to my thesis, which is that processed food is killing us and organic food is the solution. The body of my essay is divided up into two large halves, each of which is about two and a half or three pages. I have a series of bullet points or ideas for specific paragraphs that have to do with the problem, as I see it, of processed foods. And then another series of bullet points that relate to the solution, as I see it, which has to do with organic foods. And so there are, you can see that there is a one-to-one uh, -one relationship between the different bullet points in the problem section of my body and the bullet points in the solution section of my body, although this body is organized a little bit differently than the problem solution we saw um, outlined a few slides ago. And then in the legs of my essay, um, this is all I basically want to leave my writer, my reader, with the impression that they should eat organic food, that it's really good for them, it's really good for the environment for a whole bunch of reasons. With this sketch, I now have material for a complete essay on this topic. At this point, however, I would recommend abandoning the analogy of the artist's outline, turning instead to a more organic way of thinking about what we are doing. Whereas artists usually discard or paint over their outline in the process of creating their final piece, a writer's outline should be thought of as a primitive version of the final paper. It is the final paper, in utero, as it were. This is particularly true when you write on a word processor, where it is possible to keep elaborating an outline until it literally evolves, sentence by sentence, into your final paper. You can see in the legs section of this outline, I started to write out longer bullet points, proto-sentences that are like embryonic stem cells capable of growing into larger chains of ideas. Another way to jumpstart the transition from writing bullet points to writing sentences is to draft topic sentences for the paragraphs in your outline. So here you can see how the first three bullet points under the problem section of my outline have been translated into topic sentences, which can serve as the first sentences for larger paragraphs about these bullet points. So the first bullet point was simply definition of processed foods, a topic sentence that sets up a paragraph about uh, the definition of processed foods might go something like this. Although there are many different definitions of processed foods, the broadest and most basic is that processed food is any food that has been changed from its natural state. So that's an introductory sentence that allows me to go on and continue to elaborate that idea. The second bullet point simply said that I was going to talk about the history of processed foods over the last 70 or 80 years. Uh, a topic sentence that follows, that develops that into a particular statement would, might sound as follows. One of the difficulties of settling on an agreed upon definition of processed food is the rapidity with which innovations in the food industry continue to reshape the basic coordinates of what can be thought of as food. The industrialization of the food industry can be traced back to the dawn of agriculture, but it takes on its most modern form in the years following World War II. So that allows me to start off with World War II and then my, work my way up over the next few sentences through the 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. And then the uh, next bullet point, negative health effects associated with processed foods, gets a similar treatment. The topic sentence that might begin this paragraph about the negative health effects associated with processed foods might sound something like this. As more processed foods have entered the diet of modern Americans, the more visible the negative health effects of this diet have become. The most visible such effect is the rate of obesity in the USA, especially among children. Once I start writing these topic sentences, the ball is rolling, and if I can think of three different things to say about a given topic sentence, then I've got sufficient material for a complete paragraph. So here's the last topic sentence we saw. As more processed foods have entered the diet of modern Americans, the more visible the negative health effects of this diet have become. The most visible such effect is the rate of obesity in the USA, especially among children. So that um, sentence is pitched to allow me to go right into the subtopic of obesity. And from there, I'll just go bang, bang, bang through high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, and depression 
Uh, if I can write a sentence about how each of these conditions has been linked to processed foods, I'll have an extremely informative and well-organized paragraph. All I have to do is cap it off with a final sentence to take it home. And here's, I can even uh, sketch out a concluding remark, even though I haven't written the, the, the main part of the paragraph. So this is the concluding, concluding remark for this paragraph about the negative health effects associated with processed foods. There are doubtless many reasons why these illnesses are so prevalent in our society. Lifestyle factors probably play a role as well. The degree to which most Americans rely on processed foods for the vast majority of their caloric intake, however, is the most conspicuous culprit in this epidemic of preventable diseases. As you can see, an outline that begins as simply a brief sketch of your final essay can gradually develop into a complete paper as you identify main points for paragraphs, write topic sentences for the paragraphs, and then fill your paragraphs up with the kinds of things you need to say to make good on the agenda announced by that topic sentence. Repeat these steps as necessary for all of your essay's paragraphs, and you can use outlining as a way to build your essay from the inside out rather than from top to bottom or from the beginning to the end. If you get stuck on one part of the outline, you can always work on another part. Gradually, paragraph by paragraph and sentence by sentence, your paper will stitch itself together, and with just a little bit of dedicated scribbling and bibbling, before you know it, your essay will begin to take shape.